We're back with William Shatner, who is the author of Star Trek Memories. Bill joins us tonight from the studios in Fort Lee, New Jersey, where he has been uh, back making appearances there with uh, Regis and Kathy Lee and Conan O'Brien and others on behalf of this book and Star Trek. Talk to us here about, uh, about Gene Roddenberry, uh, who, who, uh, of whom, by the way, you write uh, 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 very complimentary in oh, yeah. the opening chapters when the show was getting off the ground, but your personal relationship. Well, it was, uh, it was just one of those things, a, a working relationship, which never really matured, and there was enough time to do that. And uh, I don't know why. I just always had the impression he didn't, uh, he, he didn't care for me and didn't care uh, uh, too much for some of the members of the cast. And but at one point, you sought out Majel Roddenberry, his widow. Did, did you not? And oh, I, I did an extensive interview with her, yes. And she talked about, and I wish you'd tell the folks, her, her theory about God the Creator and you members of you, the cast. You picked up on that. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's true. So, we Well, like, un unlike some of the other people that you've been with today, I come rather well prepared to this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Your producer has read the book and synopsized it. No, that's you. not quite true, sir. <laughs> the truth of the matter, you're, you're astutely uh, uh, pointing out uh, uh, a thing that uh, that was one of the more astonishing discoveries I made in writing the book. Um, Gene apparently felt a not only a proprietary uh, interest in the uh, in the uh, in Star Trek, which he, obviously he should because he invented it, but he felt a paternal uh, feeling towards all the uh, actors and the people uh, who uh, were there. Even perhaps more than paternal, he felt uh, a, 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 a a feeling that they belonged to him and, the, and we owed him. Uh, a great deal, and I suppose we did, but somehow it doesn't translate into and, a... And that maybe in his mind you weren't paying sufficient homage or, or demonstrating sufficient gratitude for the creation that he had given to you. Uh, I believe that to be true, uh, although Majel, uh, his wife, uh, would probably argue it. In any case, uh, she said to me that, uh, that uh, Gene felt that he was... Uh, the creator and uh, the god figure of Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I realized that that was probably what made me withdraw. That attitude was probably what, what instinctively made me withdraw. Why did you feel it necessary, uh, since Gene Roddenberry has passed on, to uh, allude to his illicit love affair? Well, I didn't think it was necessary, but... Well, you put it in. Yes, well, I thought it was part of the show. It was part of the uh, entirety of the, of the story of what made Star Trek go. Because everybody that became involved with Gene became involved uh, with uh, Star Trek. I shouldn't say everybody, but people I knew that were involved with Gene were also involved with Star Trek and had an influence on Star Trek. My ambition with this book was to tell the truth as I saw it in the making of Star Trek. And there were people that have never been mentioned or mentioned so rarely that they have been forgotten. Not only that, like, he, like Gene Kuhn, uh, a producer in the first half of the first season to the second half of the second season, set the tone for Star Trek, was the uh, writer uh, uh, of record uh, of many of the best episodes. Fair, fair. But then if we're going to allude to the, to the, uh, the trysting of Gene Roddenberry, should we also not then list the peccadillos of all involved who, who well, may have had extra There's a wonderful love story that I tell about Gene Kuhn, who left his wife to, to meet with and be with the woman he ultimately married, who told me the story. Uh, I don't think it's wrong to tell the fleshed out details of somebody's life, not in a in a malevolent way. No, you, it's not vitriolic, but I, you know, I know Major Roddenberry. Um, and, and, and until today, I have never thought about asking her to come on this show, but I, th I think I may do that at some point because uh, she and I have been friends for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and as has her husband uh, been a friend to me. And I just wonder, sitting in her home tonight, uh, you know, I don't know if she watches this, but I'm sure she's picked up your book. I mean, what must she think now when you write this story that her husband uh, had an extramarital affair? Well, she's not been loath to talk. I mean, she's not been loath to talk about it. She, she has expressed herself many times uh, as to what sh position she was in. But not in, for all of us to read. 
well, for a lot of us to hear in public, uh, and spoke to me very openly about it in an interview, I, I am expressing nothing that wasn't there, uh, spoken to me uh, uh, openly and uh, without any uh, hesitation. Uh, the book is researched very, very carefully, and I was very careful to quote people uh, exactly as they spoke to me, gave them uh, things to sign, papers to sign, uh, releasing the, the words, sent the okay. book in its galleys to them to look over. So uh, I, I was very, very careful and very, very uh, uh, desirous of pleasing the people who spoke to me so openly. I understand, but I had to ask, and I appreciate your answers. Let's go to the phones. We're with William Schaffner, uh, Schaffner, Chatner, <laughs> trying to it's, change it's, his man's it's the name. Medica it's the medication. <laughs> it's the medication. Yeah, it's the medication. Here is Chris in Indiana. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, Mr. Shatner, I had a question uh, concerning the uh, cult status that uh, the Star Trek has, has, has provided. The, uh, the following that you have. A couple years ago, you did a skit on Saturday Night Live where you kind of made fun of the the movement that there is for the Star Trek uh, shows. And I was just curious what your true feelings were considering that. Well, my true feeling is one of great empathy, love for the people who love Star Trek, because I too love Star Trek, but I also have a sense of humor about it, and I hope everybody else does too. It is actually uh, uh, a piece of entertainment that was on the air for three years, and we all love it, and we all do our thing with it, but we all have to have a sense of humor about it as well. Are you a big fan, Chris? Oh, yeah. I watch the show whenever I get a chance. I really wouldn't consider myself a Trekkie, though, and then that's what I kind of, kind of can't figure out in some instances yeah. how people really get into that so much that they would uh, be able to, to tell you what you, storylines are and so on. You do not consider yourself to be a Trekkie? Correct. So then you don't know how many original Star Trek episodes there were? No, not an exact figure. Well, there were 79. Write it down. 79, uh, okay. you, you, you might get a call from Letterman some night, and that could be the million-dollar question. Uh, okay. But Chris, uh, Chris thanks for calling. Bill, if you can hold for a second, sure. I have a commercial waiting. Uh, by the way, we're going to turn up the volume on these commercials, folks, so they really blare into your house. It, you know, we're going to blast them at you. <laughs> With William Shatner, author of Star Trek Memories, Craig calling us on the toll-free from Ohio. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Pretty good, Craig. Hope you are, too. I'm doing great. You great. Say hi to William from, Shatner friend. right here. Um, you've gone from Quentin Crisp to Captain Kirk. My hat's off to you. Um, Bill, um, when you would deliver those beautiful, uh, impassioned soliloquies as Captain Kirk... Yes, Craig. Um... Did you ever feel... Don't you get snotty with my caller back there. <laughs> Don't you no, give me that yes, Craig. <laughs> those were defining moments as far as I'm concerned. And How much does the line blur between Bill Shatner and Captain Kirk? How much is a what? The line between oh, uh, you uh, as the a line person and those soliloquies. Between the character and the, and the actor? Yes, sir. Well, in any uh, actor and character that uh, an actor plays, the line is um, undefined. Uh, sometimes it's, it's part of your personality. Sometimes you aim to get away from your own personality. In a series uh, where you're doing a show in six days and working 14, 18 hours a day, you don't have too much time to disguise your personality. Uh, you're just saying the lines because you've learned them and trying to put as much emotion and truthfulness into them. So I guess the, the line between Captain Kirk and myself is a very close one. And uh, perhaps if I'd had more time, I would have disguised it more. more, more but in other words, closely. the character and you at some points in time during the production were interchangeable. Yes. Yeah. There you go, Craig. Well, that's great. Thanks a lot. Tom. By the way, Craig, before you run off, are you a Trekkie, a big fan? I'm a semi-Trekkie. All right, let me try this one. Here's the Star Trek quiz. Nobody admits to it. I beg your pardon? Nobody admits to being a Trekkie. I, I want to know. Oh, definition of a Trekkie is if a guy from some town where in Ohio calls you in Burbank and asks a question about Star Trek, is that not the definition of a Trekkie? I think so. Hey, I'll own up to it. I'm a Trekkie. He's on up to it. See, Craig, that's man. it. Craig, that's good. What episode has Spock saying, you have to kill him, Captain? There's no alternative. <laughs> Craig, I want to I want to I want to I want to tell you I don't even know the answer to that. If you come um, up with the answer to this one. Do you want